Hello everybody and welcome back. If this is the first time you're joining me for a while, hi, how are you? I missed you. So it's been a hot minute since I last did a favourites video and I thought today I would indulge myself and inform you on all of my favourite things. Things that just make sense to me, things that enrich my life and bring me a little bit of joy. I have quite a random selection of items here to show you today but these are all things that fit so seamlessly and so smoothly into my routine that like I said are just an essential part of my everyday. Um, essential maybe stretching slightly when you see some of these things but in these times, in these present, present moments we have to just allow ourselves to enjoy the things we enjoy. If it's not hurting anybody, if it's not hurting you, let people enjoy things. Having a daily routine that doesn't change much, that is very set in stone, is something that has become so important to me. I talked about this a little bit in my last video, which I will shamelessly plug up here. That was my big welcome back to YouTube after a time away. I had some thoughts, some feelings, some explanations in there, so if you haven't seen it yet, please go and watch that. Probably first, and then we can come back here and have a fun time. But a routine really is just holding everything together as best it can for me and I start my routine in the morning probably around seven o'clock is when I like to be fully risen I'll try and wake up earlier than that but I like to be getting on with things by then and I drink a full cup of water game-changing groundbreaking I know never heard of before but I wanted to talk about this cup which I honestly think has changed the way I consume liquids, um, not to sound too dramatic, but I bought this beaker, I guess it's a beaker, like a tumbler, uh, a little while ago now, and ever since then I have been able to consistently drink enough water, which is something I, left to my own devices, can never achieve. I try to get three or four of these a day, which is around about three litres, and we all know the benefits. We all know what drinking water does. It's so good for your skin, your body, your mind, your energy, your sleep. Something about this, and I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's the shape, the aesthetically pleasing colours, the fact that it has a straw in it, perhaps, various different factors, just for some reason make me drink water throughout the day. Just, I sip on this, I refill it, I sip it again, I just manage to drink so much water with this cup in my life. So it's it's a big part of me. So in the morning I drink probably a full one of those before I get out of bed. I try to challenge myself to do that. And I'll also take some supplements and vitamins. I've talked quite um, in depth about the types of supplements I take in various different videos. And they are a big part of my diet because obviously I don't eat a lot of food groups. I don't eat meat, consume very small amounts of dairy as well. So I like to make sure I'm fully vitamined up and I wanted to talk about these two in particular because they're from a brand I've just grown to love over the past few months. They're from the Nuco. First of all the packaging these come in. Not that that is important when it comes to supplements but beautiful, stunning, adorable. I happily have these placed out on my bedside table and they add to the vibe. The two I have here are the Rebalance Prebiotic and Probiotic. I think a probiotic is so important, especially to me. I don't have the worst stomach, but sometimes it can just be slightly erratic. And I do find when I consistently take prebiotics, probiotics, that everything just feels a bit calm on my digestion, on point, and my skin as well. I really notice a difference in clarity in my skin. So all good things from, from gut health. Um, and then I have the Mood supplement here. This is a really cool one. It's got vitamin B12, vitamin D and ashwagandha in it. You can take it in various different ways. I used to drink the powder stirred into my coffee but these are just capsules with the added bonus of vitamins. It is so great for boosting your mood, keeping you calm, keeping anxiety at bay. It's not going to do absolute wonders but I notice again a considerable difference when I take this when I'm consuming adaptogens it really levels me out if I'm feeling way way too up and frantic it kind of pulls me down if I'm feeling a bit too low and a bit too down it pulls me up as well so these two staples in my morning routine I think I could probably make an entire favorites video every month just based around my various different morning coffee or beverage routines that is a series that nobody wants to see but me. But I have I have some more things to talk about. We've covered various different coffees, milks, receptacles throughout these favourites videos, but I do have a new favourite recipe 
uh, and a little gadget as well. Let's start off with this. This is gonna be nothing new to most of you guys. I am sure you have one of these sitting somewhere in your kitchen, whether it's out on the counter and used quite frequently or just forgotten about in a drawer somewhere. And this is an espresso. I wanna say Aeracino. It's basically a milk frother that's kind of like a tiny little saucepan slash kettle. So this sits on a stand, you literally just press this button and it whips up your milk, makes it really frothy, warms it up too. Basically a very easy version of like a proper milk steam frother. I have one of those and I always end up reaching for this because it's just so simple. You pour the milk in, you can just press the button and forget about it. But this also has a cold setting. If you hold the button down, it turns blue and it still throughs up your milk, but it keeps it cool. I have been drinking iced lattes for, it's been going on two months now. We were in the dead of winter. It was snowing and I was drinking iced coffee. This is a great little tool for that, especially if you like to kind of add certain things into your coffee. I'll just make up um, an espresso or two shots of espresso, dump it into a cup with some ice and then I will put milk into this. I'm kind of doing oat milk at the moment. I'm normally an almond milk girl, but oat milk, kind of feeling it and then I'll top up with some vegan cream and a dash of vanilla extract or vanilla paste depending on what you have and then when it throughs up it kind of just mixes all that together and it is so good poured over coffee it makes the nicest slightly sweet but not sugar crammed coffee I'm not one for syrups usually I'm not one for putting anything too sweet into into my drinks but it's so good um so that's what I've been doing with coffee using this and also I like to do a matcha latte and more recently I have been back way way back into iced chai mainly because of this here this is the minor figures chai concentrate which absolutely blows my mind that things like this exist it's just concentrated chai tea so you pour like a shot of this into a cup again with some ice and top it up with milk I don't know if they have a coffee version of this. If they did, that would be very interesting. A decaf one would be even better. But I love, love, love chai lattes and they're probably one of the more difficult things to make at home. You can use like a powder and mix it up with hot water or dunk your tea bag and simmer it for a while. But that just seconds, absolute seconds, and it is done, it is ready, it is there for you. Not to leave out, of course, the most important part of your morning coffee or drink, the cup, the receptacle, the thing you will be drinking out of. I'm not really doing myself any favors here getting this deep into a coffee routine, particularly the mug that you drink it out of, but I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not the only one who, this is one of the most important things to do. So this is my mug of choice at the moment. I've had quite an affinity for double walled glass mugs for a while now. They just feel great to drink out of. I like that I can see what's inside, hot or cold. Um, and this one has, a handle too. I have a couple that are just normal glasses, but this one has a handle, which makes it appropriate for tea as well. Let's bring things back and talk about a few of the more usual suspects for a favorites video for me. A couple of the things that I've been using to get ready, and really these are just a few because my routine right now is minimal when it comes to hair, makeup, beauty, minimal skincare, minimal makeup, minimal effort. I, if I was not already before, have become just absolutely reliant on dry shampoo. This one in particular, this Living Poof Perfect Hair Day. I've never, I've never come across a better dry shampoo. I've used quite a few in my time. I've used a lot in my time actually. And amazing, perfect. Particularly at the moment having darker hair, although my root color is pretty much the same as it always is. It's kind of my natural shade now. I do notice if a shampoo is very chalky or white, um, you can really see it sometimes in hair. And this doesn't do that at all. And it really cleans. So refreshing, light, less heavy and weighed down, no oil. Smells fresh too, smells great. Lifesaver, <laughs> lifesaver. Probably the most consistent beauty product I do use when it comes to getting ready are brow products. I have had the same brow routine for so long, years and years, and it is only up until recently that I have actually changed that completely with a whole new set of products, a new brand, and I am loving it. I've never had so much brow on my face as I have done now. So these are from Refi Beauty, which is kind of the latest, hottest Instagram brand. And there's a three step system with this. So you get this gel, which is kind of, I'd say this is the biggest 
game changer in the routine. It reminds me of soap brows, if soap brows were just easy to use and in packaging like this. So you brush this through your brows and it really kind of sticks them down, almost feels like PVA glue. And then in the lid, it has a little brush and you really kind of flatten them. Uh, against your skin and that creates the base for which you then put color on top. It's a very specific and very um, time-consuming routine for me at the moment. I think once I get the hang of it more uh, it will be a lot quicker but the second that you then go on with is the pomade. This is very clever because it has the pomade in the bottom and a brush at the top so you just take this apart, dip your brush in and then I kind of like to do it in strokes as best I can. I like to kind of build up the little hairs. All of these actually stand out on their own. This is a great pomade. I have the shade medium. These came in a set all together. They're all the same color, apart from the brow gel, which is clear. And it's probably pretty much a perfect match for my hair as it is right now. So pomade goes on, that kind of forms the basic shape. And then you also have this very tiny, tiny, precise little pencil which has a spoolie on the end too and that's what you really kind of define and brush up your brows with so these three all together are just amazing they have changed my brow game entirely last port of call when getting ready if i remember to do so is to throw on some perfume i really haven't been using perfume that much over the last year. It's kind of a step that I forgot. It's something that felt a bit too fancy just to throw on for pottering around the house all day or going to the supermarket. It kind of got a little bit forgotten about, but I've been using this one ever since I got it. I've used up a considerable amount. It's the Jo Malone Poppy and Barley Cologne, which is their newest scent. And as soon as I smelled this, I was very fortunate to be sent it in a package. I just, I put it on straight away. I think I was in my pajamas and I just sprayed it liberally all over myself because it's so good. Soft and subtle, slightly powdery, slightly sweet floral fragrance, which on paper does not sound like my kind of perfume at all, but I love it. it smells so good. Completely obsessed. I will, like I said, just walk into my bedroom now and put this on for no reason at all. I feel like I'm making up for all those times during previous lockdowns in which I just didn't, I didn't bother with perfume. Although we may not all want to admit it, I think it is probably fair to say that loungewear is still a pretty big staple in most of our routines. If I'm gonna get ready, I'm gonna go to the effort of washing my hair, having a shower, doing some kind of beauty routine, I am not then going to extend myself far enough to put on jeans or tight fitting clothes. I want comfort. I want to feel as if I am dressed in a happy little cloud. Sets like this for me are still, I think, the best way to kind of feel slightly more put together, but still have that comfort factor. This is one of my favorites that I have been consistently wearing for the past six, seven months. It's from my other stories. It's a really nice crop sweater material little top and then obviously the matching joggers joggers are life these are elasticated at the waist elasticated at the cuffs my favorite style and fit of jogger because you just get this nice bagginess same with the top actually this nice kind of room and volume to do what you will in i wanted to mention this set in particular not only because i have been wearing it so much because i also have been washing it frequently and it is still perfect there has not been any pilling any kind of strangeness happening with the fabric it is beautiful inside and out if you do get those little bumps and things on your loungewear you can buy one of those fabric trimmers you can even use a disposable razor blade and it will do a similar job and honestly it can just reinvigorate your clothes so quickly and so easily you'd think that they were brand new so that is something that i do keep on top of but these these are just what you will find me in day to day. I realise I'm being slightly hypocritical now saying that wearing an actual shirt and jumper, but this is for you guys. This is this is not for me. Now, I haven't really picked up a handbag for months. In fact, probably for the entire past 12 months for the last year, which does hurt me inside quite a bit. Obviously having a relatively extensive bag collection, which I did film for you guys recently. I think it is pretty much up to date. I'll leave that linked up here so you can see what is being neglected, basically. But I, I haven't needed to wear a handbag for so, so long. It's been a tote bag, if anything, just so I can throw in what I need to take with me. But I think I have recently found the perfect, I'm going to say no effort required, 
bag. Now, this is from a brand called Naked, Naked Fashion. It is obviously very reminiscent of the Row Banana bag, which is not only eye-wateringly expensive. Honestly, why is the Row so expensive? What are you doing, Mary Kay and Ashley? Not only is it expensive, it is also quite difficult to come by. And this is kind of your high street, much, much lower budget version. And I have been loving it. The shape of this is kind of um, asymmetrical. So it's a little bit more tapered on this end and wider here. And the gist of this is basically to wear it across body. And you keep the handle quite short and it sits so perfectly, just exactly kind of underneath your arm, at the front of your body. I love it. I love the way it looks. What it also does, being in a crossbody bag and being something quite cool and minimal and simple, it just elevates your outfit. So if you are wearing your sweatpants, your leggings, your joggers outside and you just feel a bit indoorsy, throw on a bag like that and it will change everything so quickly. It will make you look like you've actually made an effort. So for me, joggers, in a matching set, that bag, and then a coat. This is what I will look like if you see me outdoors. A living, breathing, walking, sleeping bag. I am so glad that this coat came into my life. It's something that I've been actively wanting for a long time. It's from Arquette and it is quite an expensive buy. It's definitely an investment piece. This is the kind of big winter coat that's going to last you forever and ever and ever. It is my ultimate go-to dog walking coat. I literally throw that on sometimes on top of my pyjamas in the morning and out we go. It comes pretty much down to my ankle so once it is zipped up there is nothing to see here. It is all coat and the hood is so big and cosy you can really wrap yourself up in it. I love a long line coat. I think they are definitely the most chic and stylish silhouettes when it comes to a coat. I just love something that goes all the way down. I don't want anything cutting off by my knees or a weird mid calf length. I want it to go all the way down. So when it comes to the evening portion of my routine, I couldn't really make a favorites video without mentioning probably my most, if not the favorite purchase I've ever made in my entire life, the best money I've ever spent, and that is my Peloton. I'm just obsessed. It has changed my life. I've become part of the cult through and through. I follow everyone on Instagram. I have merch. I won't go too much in depth into it right now because I feel like that deserves a whole separate video, maybe something on fitness that I can talk about later on. But whenever I talk about it, I do get so many messages and questions from you guys just asking the one simple question, is it worth it? And I, I think it's kind of a two part answer. Number one, yes, yes, <laughs> it is so completely worth it. But number two, are you, into spinning? Is that a class that you've taken before and you really enjoy? Do you also find it hard to motivate yourself to work out at home in particular when it's just you telling you what to do? Do you have the space for it? Because it will, although not massive, take up just a chunk of your of your room, of your house, of your flat, um, and it will always be there because it's so heavy you can't move it around. There's a lot of things to think about but it really has it's just changed everything for me. I was big into spin classes before the lockdown happened. I was going a couple of times a week. So it's something that I really enjoy, but I never thought I would be as motivated at home by myself as I was in a class full of people and an instructor screaming at me and lights flashing everywhere. But the actual immersive experience you get with Peloton, and, and this is where I think some people think that it's the platform, not the bike that you need to spend the money on and you know you can buy much cheaper options and then just use the actual Peloton app on an iPad to recreate that experience. I don't think you will be doing yourself justice if you opt for that. Obviously that just saves you so, so much money, not having to make that initial payout on the bike, but the screen is huge. The classes feel like you're there, the instructors are everything and the bike itself especially if you have the more premium version which i don't i have the basic bitch it's so intuitive with the numbers the dials tracking your speed tracking your kilojoules it's all very technical and i i feel like having that information and those statistics right in front of me are what really keeps me going i i know i can adjust that 
resistance just by one or two points and it flashes up straight on the screen. It's all very interconnected. I feel like having that all together is what makes that experience so, so fun. It's so fun. If you find an instructor you like, the music you like, which is all so searchable and easy to change, it will just become, as it has in my case, somewhat of an addiction. I get so pumped. <laughs> so pumped when I'm gonna do a spin if I know I'm gonna do one that day and you can do it whenever obviously because it's right there for you to use whenever you can I've done them in the morning in the evening I've done them in the middle of the night just because I felt like it but when I know I'm gonna do one and I'm planning and I'm bookmarking all my classes and kind of mixing and matching strengths and climbs and hits I love it I love it so much um so I'm not gonna go massively into that but I had I had to include my little peloton because it is my favorite favorite thing it is my absolute favorite favorite thing other than this little fluff monster i have been trying to keep as moisturized as possible like a silky slippery dolphin every which way and this has surprisingly i picked this up on a whim during a Tesco's shop when I just wanted to feel something, um, aka spend money. And it is so, so good. Why are we sleeping on the budget drugstore brands for body lotion? You go through so much of it, why spend money when you don't need to? This is the intensive seven day ultra replenishing lotion, which says, claims, hydrates up to seven days. I was not believing that, but honestly, it does. I have very dry skin everywhere, my face included, but when I use this on my body, my legs in particular, I actually notice that a few days later, after various showers and baths, I still feel like I, I, I'm moisturized, it still feels soft. I've never used a product like that before. Normally, I'll use a body lotion and then once I've showered it off, I'll feel like I need to put one on straight away again, but this really hydrates deep, deep down. I like this a lot. Very nice, very subtle scent. One of my favorite things to do of an evening is just to lather myself up in that. Um, skincare favorites, mostly I have just been cleansing. Cleansing when you have nothing to cleanse off other than the day always seems a little bit pointless to me, but I have been trying to stick to a good skincare routine. Um, my cleanser of choice has been the Elemis Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. I have the rose version here but they also have just come out with the Naked Cleansing Balm, which definitely suits the aesthetic slightly more. This is great because it's without perfume. A lot of these are quite heavily fragranced, as you can see by the absolute lack of product now in this pot. When I use this rose scented one in the evening, I just, I take a moment to breathe it in and it just zens me out completely. It really, really calms me down. So I've kind of come to associate this scent with winding down and just feeling chilled and relaxed for the evening. It is super, super nourishing. So again, dry skin absolutely loves it. That's probably the main skincare that I've been using, just cleanser and then straight onto serum and moisturizer. I've also been back, back on this. Every year or so, every couple of years, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, I get myself another pot of the Nuxer of Miel and I go a little mad for it. It's it's the best lip balm. I don't know why I ever buy anything else. I don't know why I waste my money. This is the best, best, best thing. I've been having a lot of problems recently with my lips. They're so dry to the point that they've never been that dry before. Really kind of flaky and nothing. And I had tried quite a few different lip balms before I bought this again. Nothing touched them until I put this on. And literally the next day, the next day, they were fine. It was crazy. It was a miracle. I'll never stray from you again, I promise. You and me, this is the real thing. The last part of my evening routine, once we've had a cup of tea, once an episode of RuPaul's Drag Race has uh, been and gone, cannot stop watching that at the moment. It is the best. The UK one was just top, top tier. But once that is all done and it's time to go to sleep, I have one final favorite, this eye mask. I have talked a lot about my problems with sleeping and the various different ways I've tried to combat that, whether it is getting into a routine like I am now, whether it is taking supplements, pillow sprays, all sorts of things. I will try anything you've got, honestly, to make me sleep better. And this has been such a small change, but also such a huge one in the grand scheme of things. It is really squishy and thick. It's not one of those thin, very dainty little eye masks that barely blocks out any light. This is heavy duty. It's from a brand called 
on me really really comfortable there's actually like a space here so when you put it over your eyes your eyelashes don't touch the mask so you don't feel kind of really squished down and constrained and it's super black out it really does block out every single bit of light and this just helps me get such a good sleep even though i sleep in a completely dark room blinds closed thick heavy curtains i still think having just zero percent light which is what you get when you use one of these masks makes all the difference i will sleep soundly all the way through the night and that is a big deal for me when i have this on i think that is everything there you have it probably the most random assortment of favorites i've ever put together for a video but very representative to where i am in life right now i think so i hope you've enjoyed this i'm gonna leave what i can linked down below and that is it for me today thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon Bye. Um, bye. <laughs>